Welcome everybody to a look at the latest Eureka release. It's part of their Masters of Cinema series. It is number 292 and it is 1978's Message from Space. So this is directed by Kinji Fukusaku, who's most well known for his Yakuza films like Yakuza Graveyard, Cops vs. Fugs and the recent release Sympathy for the Underdog via Radiant Films. But he's also fallen outside of that genre with the likes of this, The Green Slime and The Fall of Ico Castle. So this is a space opera clocking in at 105 minutes long. Stars the likes of Vic Morrow who I've only seen in minimal amounts of stuff like Humor is from the Deep and Twilight is on the movie which he unfortunately alongside two children died in a stunt that went horrifically wrong. Uh, also stars Shinichi Chiba who was in the likes of the Street Fighter trilogy. Yakuza Wolf 1 and 2, and The Fall of Aiko Castle. Also stars Etsuko Shihomi, who was in the Sister Street Fighter films. And finally, Hiroki Sanada, who was in like, Ringu Sunshine, The Last Samurai, John Wick Chapter 4, and Bullet Train. Not the 70s version. And uh, yeah, somewhere in a far-flung galaxy lies the planet of Julusia. Once a peaceful utopia, it has now fallen under the control of the Gavanus Empire a warlike race ruled by the ruthless Emperor Roxir. Desperate for help, the leader of the Jelusian people launches eight Liabi seeds into space, glowing orbs that, um, according to a legend, will each summon a powerful warrior to the planet's aid. And then the seeds are followed into the void by Princess Emerelida, who is a, and a loyal Jelusian soldier called Urako, who attempt to find the prophesied protectors of the home, those of which are an ex-military commander, General Garuda, and his robot companion BB-2, uh, thrill-seeker Shiro and Aaron, Gambler Jack, aristocrat Mayor, and Swordsman Hans, who has a deeply personal score to settle with the Gavanus Empire. So yeah, I can see fully see why some would just instantly dismiss this as a Star Wars knockoff because there are definitely similarities to that. You know, the likes of BB2 basically is a mix between RD, R2D2 and CP3, RC3PO because he's small, he's kind of cute looking, but he also talks. So you know, he's got both of the qualities of both of those robots. And, you know, some of the um, soldiers look, especially on the Empire side, look like Stormtroopers. It's also got the same kind of look in terms of some of the miniatures, but this still has its own positives while being charming in its own right. I love the miniatures themselves. Um, they are really, really well done. It's, you know, like a lot of uh, Japanese films that have miniatures. You look at all of the Godzilla films, especially the first 15, and they've got wonderful miniatures. And this is more of that really, just with more, you know, design work put into him because obviously set in a sci-fi world it's not set in the real world in some regards uh so yeah there's a lot of design work that's gone into them uh the design of the spaceships also look really rather great and the general look of the film is both well realized um the action scenes are fun the score is brilliant uh you can tell this was the most expensive japanese film ever made at the time because the production is predominantly convincing there are some blue screen elements that don't work quite as well can definitely tell that they're on a, a different film print because the quality does drop in terms of the picture but it still looks uh, convincing enough for, in terms of the miniatures it is reasonably well paced and it is overall engrossing now sure it has a lot of characters which at times does muddle the plot i think it could have dealt with uh, more than um been better had it cut down the amount of characters because there is a lot of them um which like i said muddles the plot and characterization in general is underwhelming, but this was on the whole a really, really fun film. So, uh, yeah, and it's another one from Kinji Fukusaku, who I've which I've really enjoyed, to be honest. And in terms of his sci-fi films, I've seen two of them now, this and Green Slime. This is definitely my favourite of the two. Still yet to see Virus, which came out a couple of years after this, which um, dethroned this as the most expensive Japanese film ever. So, yeah, Kinji was certainly... Uh, not one for reigning in his budgets, um, getting bigger over time. Uh, but yeah, still fantastic physical release on this as well. Nicely done disc. We've got the new artwork on the one side of the sleeve, but then we've also got the original artwork on the other side. Which is nice to see. Then we get a booklet. That's the Julusian city. And then we also get a... Uh, schematic of bb2 
And then inside the booklet, we get your casting, your crew credits. And then we get the joy of Message of, uh, from Space by Christopher Stewardson, uh, which takes up the whole booklet. Outside of a, uh, a Japanese poster in the back of the film. And then what looks like a, yeah, it's a video console used for the ECG effects. Welcome to 70s technology, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, and surprisingly, for we rarely do get one of these in a uh, Eureka release. We get a double-sided poster. So we get the original artwork, but with English... With English words on it and such and such. And then we get a Japanese alternate version of the poster as well. And it's on really nice thick paper. And uh, yeah, it's a high quality thing. It's not, you know, cheap, thin poster paper or anything like that. And then to top it all off, we've got all of the extras on the actual disc itself. So we've got new artwork for the limited edition slipcase by Scott Saslow. And then we've got the limited edition reversible poster. So it will only be included in this version of the release. The standard edition will not come with that. We've got a 1080p HD presentation of the film on Blu-ray from a restoration of the original film element supplied supplied by Toei. We've got the original Japanese audio. We've got optional English dubbed audio. We've got optional English subtitles. Brand new audio commentary by Tom Mez. Message from Earth. Archival interview. Uh, archival documentaries. Sorry, featuring interviews with Shinichi Chiba and Kenta Fukasaku. Uh, brand new uh, brand new appreciation of the film by film writer Patrick Marcius and then all of the physical extras that I've already shown you already so um yeah really rather fun film three and a half out of five I know that is not far from the highest of scores ever but it's just you know shows that there are a lot of positives to it but like I said there are elements that, to it that are, are a bit of a drawback but I imagine that this would only improve in terms of watching it over time. But if you want a, you know, an epic space film that has a great deal of miniatures and action scenes, then Battle from Outer Space is probably even better, to be honest. Um, that is also a Eureka release. I uh, don't believe I can instantly see it off the back of my shelving unit here. Uh, yes, there we go. Battle in Outer Space even. So yeah, that was released as a double feature with the H-Man. Um, yeah, Battle in Outer Space is definitely the better film in terms of just being a pure sci-fi film with, you know, action scenes and miniatures. But Message from Space does have a bit more charm and a bit more um, uniqueness to it, even though it is, at the end of the day, somewhat of a Star Wars ripoff. Nonetheless, so if you have seen this film before, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. And now, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye.